Hello students, myself Rahul Kothkar. In this lecture, we are going to study the chapter number 10, Magnetic Fields Due to Electric Current. So, before starting this chapter, first we have to recall some previous concepts. So, do you know that a magnetic field is produced around a current carrying wire? So, it's simple. Let's suppose this is the conductor carrying a current I. In this case, we can see here the magnetic field produced around the current carrying conductor. Okay, means around the conductor, the magnetic field is produced when it carries a current. Second thing, what is the right hand rule? So, to consider that, first let here we have to state the right hand thumb rule. What is the right hand thumb rule? Let consider that a current carrying conductor held in your right hand such a way that the fingers are curled around the conductor and the thumb is stretched in such a way that the curved fingers shows the direction of magnetic field produced around the conductor and the thumb shows the direction of flow of current. So, this is your right hand thumb rule. Then, next point is your, can you suggest an experiment to draw a magnetic field lines of the magnetic field around the current carrying wire? So, let for that, here we consider a simple experiment. In this experiment, what we observe, a big sheet is given here. In this sheet, let what we have at its center, means at this position, we observe a long straight current carrying wire is passed through it. The other connections are there, means here the battery is attached to this wire. So, it can flow the current. Okay, and now what we are doing here, simply we spread a small iron particles on this paper sheet. Okay. So, as the current flows through it, so what happens? The magnetic field is produced around this conductor and this magnetic field produced around the conductor arrange the small ion particles in this circular manner. Okay, means in the form of concentric circles. So, what this denotes? This denotes that there is the formation of magnetic field around the conductor and that is nothing but what the magnetic field produced due to the current carrying conductor and it can be shown by a simple way. Then next question is there, do you know solenite? Can you compare the magnetic fields due to the current carrying solenite with that due to a bar magnet? So in 10th standard you studied there, what is the solenoid? Okay. So, in case of solenoid and a bar magnet, both shows the same magnetic field. Okay. So, in this manner, this is about the some concept which are related to your previous standard. Now, friends, here in this chapter, we have to study first part that is the introductory part. Okay. So, in this introductory part, what is given there? So, sim. Uh, some concepts related to this chapters are given to you which you already studied in the previous standard that is what a simple experiment that showing the Oersted activity which shows that the magnetic field produces due to the electric current let's first we see a video of this one so friends, you first observe this simple circuit connection. Here, this will shows this will shows the resistance in a circuit. This is the compass box, and this is the key used in the circuit. 
while these are the batteries you may call them as a cell okay single one is called as a cell and when they are connected in a series or in a parallel combinedly known as a battery so this is a simple circuit connection mentioned here okay now what here we have to observe so you observe this video carefully as you observe this video carefully what you can see here simply when first look the what happens here now key is connected means what the current starts to flow in the circuit the compass shows the deflection okay as a key get disconnected the compass will get reset to its original position as you change the position of the battery so what happens when the switch is get on again you will found that there is the deflection occurs in the magnetic needle okay and as a key get disconnected what happens the magnetic needle again reset observe video carefully okay as key connected the red symbol is in the downward direction okay as key get disconnected again it gets the original position now there is the change in the battery terminals okay means positive becomes negative now as a key get connected what you observe you observe there the red terminal is at the top okay observe carefully what happens there the red terminal is at the top what happens in the previous case in the previous case you observe there the red terminal is at the bottom while in this case the red terminal is at the top okay what is the actual difference here the oersted observe the four cases in the first case he observe that when the battery terminals are connected suppose the current flows from positive terminal to the negative terminal at that time what happens the previous case occurs okay which looks like this okay the red terminal is at the bottom okay means the direction of magnetic field get reverse when the battery terminals are reverse okay what happens here the battery terminals are becomes reverse okay in the next case they get reverse so this is the main observation here when the battery terminals are get reverse what happens there should be the flow of current get reverse okay and the magnetic field is also get reverse okay as second observation is there what is that when the flow of current increases how we can increase the flow of current we can increase the flow of current by simply increase the number of cells connected in a series means instead of two you can use the four cells six cells at that time you will get the more and more current flowing through this conductor and that will be shows the amount of magnetic field produced means deflection of compass needle will be the maximum so friends in this manner this is a simple experiment performed by the oersted the scientist oersted gives the relation between magnetic field and electric current means the magnetic field is produced by an electric current when passing through the wire so then gauss henry faraday and other also contributes the magnetic field is an important partner of the electric field then maxwell theoretically gives the relation between electric field and magnetic field that we already studied in the electromagnetic waves okay and then it will be results to the several practical applications in our day to day life for example electric motors generators communication systems and in computers also in electrostatics we discussed about the static charge and the force exerted by them on a other charge or on a test charge 
so here we have to consider the forces between the charges in a motion so to study that here we have to perform this activity so friends what is this activity simply what is this activity in first figure means 10.1 a you observe the two conductors are present there okay and these two conductors are parallel to each other okay so what we observe here these are the two parallel straight conductors okay and in this conductors what we can say there is the flow of current in the unlike direction okay unlike direction means what that is the flow of current is in the opposite direction okay means the two current carrying conductors in which the current is carrying in the upward direction while in this conductor the current is carrying in the downward direction okay so i will draw this figure in this space okay so in this case let's suppose this is a conductor 1 which simply represent here and this is conductor 2 okay so is it name as a 1 it is time as a 2 so one carries a current in the upward direction and other carries the current in a downward direction okay now first okay starting this topic first we have to remind uh, again one famous law that is called fleming's left hand rule okay so what is the fleming left hand rule so do you know that in case of fleming left hand rule this law states that or this rule states that okay the thumb four finger and middle finger are stretched in a such a way that okay these are for the left hand so fleming's left hand rule states that stretch the thumb four finger and middle finger of the left hand in such a way that they are mutually perpendicular to each other as they are mutually perpendicular to each other so the four finger denotes the direction of magnetic field and middle finger denotes the direction of flow of current then the thumb represents the direction of force acting on a conductor okay remember okay what is the law this law or this rule states that the four finger denotes the direction of magnetic field middle finger denotes the direction of flow of current and thumb represents the direction of force experienced by that conductor so in this manner this is your fleming left hand rule and you can simply remember it by using f b i okay so what is that this is the mnemonics to remember the law this will useful to you for remembering this law as a f b i okay so your thumb middle finger uh, sorry four finger and this is a middle finger now we have to apply the two rules here that is the thumb rule right hand thumb rule and fleming's left hand rule to this figure so let first we apply the fleming's right hand thumb rule so in case of right hand thumb rule what is that according to the right hand thumb rule if the current carrying in a conductor 1 is in the upward direction so just imagine and apply the rule here in such a way that the current is flowing in the upward direction so just imagine that the conductor is held in your right hand in such a way that so stretch thumb denotes the direction of flow of current and the curl fingers denotes the direction of magnetic field so means what is the direction of magnetic field it is directed inside the conductor 
sorry inside the paper or inside the plane of this figure so this is the direction of magnetic field so what is this this will called as a b1 why it is called b1 because this is a magnetic field produced due to the conductor 1 and so it is represented as a b1 now what you can say here let me call this current as a i1 i1 produces the magnetic field p1 and which is experienced by conductor 2 so now conductor 2 have a two things one is called current 2 other is called magnetic field 1 okay means here the two parameters are there current flowing through the conductor and magnetic field experienced by the conductor second now we can apply the Fleming's left hand rule so according to the Fleming's left hand rule what we can say the direction okay you have to just imagine the conductor in such, uh, directions of this current and the magnetic field in the given conductor okay so the middle finger represents the direction of okay just held the middle finger in such a way that which is pointed towards your face means pointed to you what is the direction of magnetic field direction of magnetic field is directed okay in such a way that it is away from you okay just hold the hand okay in such a way that hold the left hand in such a way that all the fingers are means left uh, sorry thumb middle finger and forefinger of your left hand are stretched in such a way that they are mutually perpendicular to each other now what you can say the current is flowing in the downward direction so held your middle finger in a downward direction okay magnetic field is directed inside the paper so held it away from your face okay means which is pointed towards the uh, sorry away from you so what is the direction of thumb thumb denotes the direction towards your right hand okay means along this side you observe there the direction of force experienced by this conductor that is i will call here f2 because the force experienced by conductor 2 is what f2 and so which is away from the conductor 2 now in similar manner the conductor 2 carries the current i i2 and due to that according to the right hand rule right hand thumb rule the magnetic field is produced and that magnetic field is experienced by conductor 1 so what is the direction of magnetic field okay then again held the conductor in your right hand in such a way that the magnetic field produced okay which gives the direction of magnetic field produced and as you held the right hand in such a way that the conductor is pointed towards you means thumb is pointed towards your side so the fingers curl fingers are in the upward direction means the direction of magnetic field is outside the plane of paper and which is your b2 now what you have on a conductor one the current i1 is flowing and magnetic field b2 due to the conductor two is acting so we can calculate the force as simply by using the flaming left hand rule again simply stretch the thumb middle finger and forefinger of your left hand in such a way that they are mutually perpendicular to each other now in this case again the middle finger shows the direction of flow of current which is in the upward direction the thumb uh, sorry the forefinger is directed towards your side okay so in that case what you observe the force experience means the thumb direction of thumb is outside okay that is the away from conductor one okay and that is what f1 so as you observe here force f1 and f2 are 
away from each other okay and so what your figure shows here in this figure you observe there when the square conductor kept in this plane okay simply the conductor like this place here okay so this will be move away from each other okay because of unlike flow of current means current flows in the opposite direction at that time there is the repulsion takes place and that's why they are moving away from each other okay remember friends here we are not talking about the magnetic poles because in case of magnetic poles what you observe the unlike poles say as to south and north when comes closest to each other they attracts to each other but in case of the wire carrying a current i through it they keep parallel to each other at that time when there is the unlike flow of current means current flowing in the opposite direction in the both wires at that time they repels each other now by applying the same phenomenon to this wires okay what this wires have this wire have a two parallel conductors but in this case both wires carries the current i1 and i2 okay this is a conductor 1 this is a conductor 2 and both the wires carries the current in the same direction now again here we have to apply the flemings Uh, right hand thumb rule okay so right hand thumb rule here we have to apply and what this right hand thumb rule according to that okay just we have to get the direction of magnetic field now imagine the conductor 1 is held in your right hand in such a way that the current flows in the upward direction so your right hand okay held in such a way that and fingers are curled around the conductor so imagine held the pen okay or conductor in your hand in such a way that the thumb denotes the direction of flow of current in the upward direction okay just held the uh, your right hand in such a way that which is on a mobile screen okay and thumb is directed towards the upward so now what happens your magnetic field means curl fingers are directed in the downward direction means what this is the direction of magnetic field due to the conductor 1 acting on conductor 2 so in this manner the conductor 2 will have the two things current as well as magnetic field and so again apply the flemings rule here flemings left hand rule according to that what we have the flemings left hand rule having a two things okay when a conductor carrying a current i2 okay what is the direction here means which thumb uh, sorry which finger we have to use that is a four finger to represent this current so current is directed in the upward direction means okay you have to keep your uh, left hand in such a way that which denotes the direction of four uh, sorry it is not a direction of four finger the current is represented by middle finger now as the middle finger represents the direction of current so you have to be keep it in the downward direction but what is the condition the magnetic field is in the downward direction acting in this case so means move your four finger of the left hand in the downward side and the current that is a middle finger towards the upward side means away from you so you will found that the thumb is directed in the this direction that is along the left side or left part of the body which represents the f1 that is a force uh, sorry f2 force experienced by conductor 2 now in similar manner as this conductor 2 carries the current i2 so in that case again what we have okay the direction of flow of current in such a way that which is in the upward direction okay and so the 
magnetic field experienced by the conductor 1 due to the conductor 2 is your B2 which is in the upward direction and according to that by applying the Fleming's rule here again what we get we get the direction of force okay so what is the direction towards the conductor 2 means what we can say in this case the forces are acting towards each other means it is the force of attraction which force is acting here like a force of attraction okay means when a conductor carrying the like current okay current flowing in the same direction it is known as a like current and for such a case of like current what is there the attraction between the two conductor is observed okay and so that's why what you observe these two conductors are get moving towards each other and this is a simple case which represents the conductors which are kept parallel to each other at that time these conductors having a flow of current in the opposite direction that is a unlike current in case of unlike current you observe there is the repulsion okay and in case of like current when the two parallel conductors kept to each other at that time the flow of current is like so at that time there is the attraction okay this is completely opposite to the magnetic poles okay remember carefully so this is about a simple activity given to you and now here we have to be observe the figures which are on the next page that is 231 okay what they represents here okay just I explain you about the Fleming's rule in this manner they observe here the direction of flow of current this is the direction of magnetic field then this is the direction of force okay that is the application of Fleming's left hand rule is given here and this is your right hand thumb rule okay you can observe here the thumb denotes the direction of flow of current while the curl finger shows the direction of magnetic field produced okay then next topic that we have to start that is called magnetic force okay this force or this topic may also called Lorentz force okay because this force is invented by scientist Lorentz and so it is also known as a Lorentz force okay <coughs> Now what is the Lorentz force as similar to the okay now what is the Lorentz force so it's simply the Lorentz force acting on any charge particle can be given by simply the sum of the force due to the magnetic field and force due to the electric field okay so what is the force due to the magnetic field and what is the force due to the electric field that here we have to discuss. So as here is given in the description what is that we observe there when a current flowing through a conductor means a flow of current is nothing but the flow of the charges okay that may be the positive charge that may be the negative charge as per our concentration okay means if a current flowing through a conductor okay when a current flows through a conductor the meaning of this word the flow of electron is in the opposite direction to that of the flow of current okay always remember this a direction or flow of electron is always opposite to that of the flow of current okay means the negative charges are flowing in the opposite direction to that of the current while the positive charges are flowing in the same direction means holes are flowing in the same direction to that of the flow of current okay now in this manner we consider here a current is flowing through a conductor so in that case 
the charge having velocity v having magnetic field b and force f will be experienced by them so what is the force experienced by the negatively charged electron here the first equation is given to you what does it represents so the force acting on a charged electron that is a fm due to the magnetic field b okay when a electron is moving with velocity v okay and that is given by here fm is equal to minus e multiplied by v cross b okay all these are the vector quantities except the charge okay so this is your v cross b but for our convenience okay we consider that a charge entity as a positive and which represent here by a q and so this equation becomes fm is equal to q multiplied by v bar cross b bar so this is a simple expression related to this one so this is nothing but your force due to the magnetic field and this is given by expression okay fm is equals to q multiplied by v bar cross b bar now in similar manner when the conductor okay as you observe in the both parallel conductors there is a presence of magnetic field okay as well as electric field due to the flow of current the electric field is there okay and due to the flow uh, presence of another conductor it experiences the magnetic field due to this another conductor means both the things are present here that is a magnetic field as well as electric field and this presence of magnetic field and electric field okay so what is the electric field so as you studied in the previous standard the force experienced by the conductor uh, sorry charge due to the electric field and that is nothing but your q multiplied by e okay where e be the electric field intensity and q be the charge acting uh, charge flowing okay and so in this manner what we have the combine of both we have a simple relation and that is nothing but your force lorentz force and that lorentz force is given by the sum of force due to the electric field and force due to the magnetic field okay so let here this is about your lorentz force and this force is here known as a magnetic force now you can see here the description is given to you what is the lorentz force the lorentz force described here okay so lorentz force means 10.4 gives you the lorentz force means simply what the sum of both that is electric and magnetic field forces okay now we have to consider the two consequences in this lorentz force first one if the velocity v of the charged particle is parallel to the magnetic field b then the magnetic force is zero okay simply what here we have to consider we consider that when a conductor carrying a current uh, sorry when a charge is moving with velocity v okay parallel to the magnetic field means the direction of flow of charge okay and the direction of magnetic field apply okay how the direction of magnetic field is considered here let we have this is the north pole this is a south pole okay so this is the south pole and the direction of magnetic field is always from north pole to the sorry uh, north pole to the south pole and the charge is moving in the same direction of the magnetic field with velocity v so at that time what we have we have a simple relation 
according to the formula okay f m can be given by in case of this what we can write q and what is v cross b that can be given by v b sin theta so as it is a v b sin theta where theta be the angle between the velocity v and magnetic field b according to that okay what is the angle in between the velocity v and magnetic field b they are parallel to each other means angle is zero okay so sin zero and sin zero has value zero so whole term becomes zero and so it experiences the magnetic force as a zero okay simple concept is there so when the both the motion of the charge and the magnetic field are parallel to each other at that time the force due to the magnetic field is equals to zero okay in similar manner the second consequence is there okay what is the second consequence here if the charge is stationary then the force is also zero even the b is not equals to zero okay for the stationary charge okay now again we have to move this equation if suppose as a charge is stationary means its velocity is zero as a velocity is zero then in the given equation whatever it may be the value of magnetic field the total force acting due to the magnetic field is always equal to zero means under the two situations the magnetic field force is equals to zero one is what when the velocity means the motion of the charge and the magnetic field are parallel to each other and second one is your if the velocity is zero whatever it may be the value of magnetic field then the force due to the magnetic field is always zero okay so next point that we have to discuss okay so what this figure indicates figure shows here this is the direction of velocity this is the direction of magnetic field let's suppose both are mutually perpendicular to each other then by vector what we have the resultant of both okay resultant of both is the another vector which lies in the plane perpendicular to the plane of both vector v and b and so it is your v bar cross b bar okay don't write like a b bar cross b bar it is always v bar cross b bar according to the vector rules okay then most important thing that here we have to discuss about the direction okay so what is there the important thing is the direction and for that let here we consider that the force acting here is q into v cross b and according to that what is this charge q and the product of this one v b sin theta and for representing the direction we consider the unit vector as a n cap okay what is the n cap n cap denotes the direction of unit vector in the direction of force okay so after that by considering that okay just i have to write this formula in terms of magnitude means i am not interested to consider here direction okay i will avoid this direction so what is the formula q into v into b sin theta let i am consider that the velocity v and the magnetic field b are perpendicular to each other 
means the angle between them is 90 degree so what is the value of sin 90 sin 90 has value 1 so what is the remaining that is f is equals to b into q into v okay so remember this okay now using this i can find the unit of a given physical quantity okay so let here we consider that f is equal to b into q into v so therefore b is given by f divided by q into v so what is the si unit the si unit is given by force force is nothing but your newton per okay newton charge is measured in coulomb and velocity is measured in meter per second and so that can be written as newton second coulomb meter okay and this is nothing but the unit of magnetic field okay so this is the unit of magnetic field when we consider that the force acting is equals to 1 newton charge is of 1 coulomb and the charge is moving with a speed of 1 meter per second in such a situation the SI unit of magnetic field is nothing but your newton second coulomb meter but in the memory of scientist tesla the SI unit is named as a tesla okay so this is the representation of si unit and symbolically it is given as a capital t okay it is a full name but the unit tesla is too much larger and so the another unit is used called gauss okay that is g a u double s so another unit is used for measurement of magnetic field and which is known as a gauze what is the relation between the tesla and gauze okay but gauze is not the si unit remember it is not the si unit okay the tesla is the si unit now the relation between the one tesla and gauze is simply 1 tesla equals to 10 to the power 4 gauze okay and it is simply the smaller unit of magnetic field now up to that what about the dimensions of a given magnetic field so as you substitute the dimensions related to the magnetic field b is equals to okay force divided by charge into velocity as a force having dimensions m raised to 1 l raised to 1 t raised to minus 2 charge having dimensions i raised to 1 t raised to 1 and velocity having dimensions m raised to 1 okay uh, sorry L rest to 1, L rest to 1, meter per second, meter is in the length, so L rest to 1, okay, and per second, and for that I will write here T rest to 1. So, as per that, what we have, we have final dimensions as M rest to 1, T rest to minus 2, and I rest to minus 1. So, what are the dimensions? of magnetic field m raised to 1 t raised to minus 2 and i raised to minus 1 ok so these are the dimensions of a magnetic field so remember about the dimensions also so friends in this manner we studied here the introduction of magnetic fields due to electric current and 
the magnetic force which may also called as a Lorentz force. So be study carefully if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section. Okay, thank you for watching video.